What's up, y'all? We are going to take a look at a couple of new books that are being offered by Artisan Ideas. Now, y'all might recall last year we did one on locks and keys throughout the ages. The owner of the publishing company was kind enough to send this out then for us to show you guys to see if you were interested in it. And he just recently reached out to me and said, hey, Jason, we've got a couple of new books that y'all might be interested in. And I was like, send them on. I'd love to show our viewers this. Now, one of the books I will go ahead and notate right now is a blacksmith-oriented book. Traditionally, back in ye olden days, when somebody needed to secure something, they would go to a blacksmith and, and try to get them to do it. And as a result, some blacksmiths realized, hey, lock making is my thing. And uh, that is how locksmiths kind of came into existence. This book is very focused on making by blacksmith methods actual locks. So this may not be more interesting to some of our just regular locksmiths or our other uh, subscribers, but we probably will pick up some blacksmiths watching this in case you're interested. It applies to you as well. But we do talk a lot about antique locks on this channel, so if you're interested in this, I highly su suggest you subscribe to our channel because uh, even though we do have a lot of fun on the channel, we do do a lot of antique locks. So. Uh, the other one is the Persian Locks, 1500 Years of Iranian Padlocks. Both of the two new ones are full color. This was a reprint by Asa Abloy, so they basically re-digitally masterized the black and white photos. But we have a lot of beautiful full color photos in both of these. So the new Spruce Forge Manual of Locksmithing, the first 65 is paid. It's about a 300 page book. It's about $45. Uh, but of course you can save $5 using our promo code that they were kind enough to let us have five bucks off a book. If you buy all three, that is just on these three, I might add. Uh, and it'll save you five bucks per book if you're interested in getting any of them. But the uh, Spruce Forge book goes through a little bit, about 65 pages of tooling, setting up your forge, but as you see here, we've got beautiful full color photos uh, and uh, showing how the different metal needs to be colored as when you're, when you're forging it itself. I've got a lot of friends that are blacksmiths actually hung out with quite a few blacksmiths and have watched them pound on metal to make things. As a blacksmith, the first thing you really do is you learn how to make your own tools because most blacksmith tools are very specific. So that also kind of briefly touches on that in relation to locks, because as you can see, you can't just go buy a particular jig to use to wind a spring, as we'll look at over here in just a second. So as a blacksmith, they just make what they need to be able to use it in future applications. And we do have a couple of locks. I'll go ahead and pull this out. It goes through pretty much what locks are, you know, if you're a blacksmith and you're not really familiar with locks, here's another another great full color photo showing the, the temper of the metal and what you should be looking for. But uh, as you flip through here, somewhere in here, we've got a section that I can actually show you an example on tenons. This is a tenon. This is one lock that was sent in because we have a broken spring. And in the, the Spruce Forge book, a tenon is simply a rivet that is I have to stop now because my normal viewers are gonna get mad. We do have a segment on uh, Saturday mornings uh, where we have Jason Reeds and uh, my normal viewers are gonna get a little bit irritated if I don't go ahead and shift into Jason Reeds. Believe it or not, we actually have the stickers for it as well. So uh, anytime books are involved or reading, uh, we're gonna have to do Jason Reeds. But this is an exact instance of a tenant and you can see I've already popped it apart not so easy to do sometimes some of you guys were better at making these than others this guy was not flat I've flattened it back out and you can see that it is not really flat there but metal is forgiving and we're going to get that straightened back out we see the broken spring right here and we also see the lever that goes vertically that's up and down which is kind of unusual 
It is a single lever lock, and if it was spring-loaded, it would push it down, and then as you put the key in and turn it, it pushes it and then drops back down to keep somebody from forcing the bolt back. And then the tenons would be snapped back together and hammered down with a cold chisel. Now they did start getting more complicated. That's a simple one lever lock, but here we have a two lever lock made of brass. It actually has handmade stamped in it. And if we pop it apart, it was held in with screws. We can see that the levers are individually spring loaded since there are more than one. So you've got uh, locks that go from one to two all the way up to seven, eight, nine, ten for the more complicated safe deposit box locks and such. But most desk locks are not really go beyond gonna go beyond like a three lever lock. Uh, same theory applies, however, it just makes it a little bit more secure as far as the key goes. And again, as we go back to this book, we'll flip a couple more pages over. And a few things were covered as well in the, uh, the locks and keys throughout the ages. There is a section in this concerning the warding of a key. And here we've got an example of either a Polish or a Danish lock. She was not sure, but she knew it was one of the two. This is a great example of both a broken key, oh no, and a warding. The warding here in this picture shows you different styles of keys that makes the keys look cool. Uh, and then at the bottom, it shows you there are ways of skeleton keys of bypassing that. So in this case, while we do have several wards, which you can see on the back side here, you see these three little uh, tenons that are hammered into the metal. Those are the three wards that correspond. And uh, this would be what's going on inside different heights of the wards. So this would obviously be the deepest one, but to make a skeleton key for this, we would just go straight down and straight over and it would bypass the wards. And on the back side, you can also see these two little, uh, two little tenons as well. That's actually the ward on the back side. So this is actually a heavily warded lock, very common way to keep certain keys from opening other locks. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, most of the bulk of this book is focused on different patterns, different styles of locks. However, a ton, a ton of time was spent with the measurements with the drawings, some sections, it, it kind of starts off with the more simple locks, like these simpler pipe locks, gives you complete measurements and works its way up. It seems like it works its way up into more complicated ones, more than likely going on the theory that you learn as you go, you learn one trick doing this and you can apply it to more complicated mechanisms. So as you go through, some sections have five or six pages dedicated to making that lock and some have 16 or 17 pages. And as we go through, we can see this is a spring lock. I'll go ahead and stop now because spring locks are actually pretty dang popular and were very common in the Persian padlock world. 1500 years of Iranian padlocks is another mostly full color picture book that goes over the major lock making centers that go through and find uh, the history of the locksmiths that were overseas, me in the US that's overseas, and uh, the religious implication of locks and keys, as well as the photos of the common keys. And as you can see, a lot, a lot of them were both the spring lock. Now this is just a standard body, but over there it was very common as well as in like China and such for the spring locks to be animal shaped because of course they were revered as certain, uh, I guess, godlike figures like Egypt and cats. But as you can see, you've got horse locks, you have uh, lion locks, goat, bear, all depending on which particular animal was revered in the particular region. And 
Uh, almost all of them are really big fish. Most of them are based on the simple spring lock that this book shows you. So this is a great collector's book. It definitely teaches you about how they kind of evolved and it goes over even some of the earliest combination style locks. So great addition for the collectors out there and uh, very interesting locks in here. I haven't had a chance to flip through much of this one yet, but uh, yeah, it's a great addition to your library for the collector, especially if you collect these styles of locks, you may very well have a lock in your collection and not know that it was made from the 16th to 20th century and where in the region it was, the more common materials used. So this book was around, I think, $33, $34. Again, with your discount, your, your promo code typed in, you'll save five bucks on it. But the rest of the book goes through mainly, again, nothing but schematics of different styles of locks and how to do pretty much everything as far as making them. And as I mentioned again, it goes in a little bit more complicated locks crab lock, I've never called it a crab lock, I call those like chest locks, but uh, it even goes into like classic rim locks as you go through because it is uh, somewhere in there, where is it, where is it? You can see the, the tons of information they have available. Uh, gate locks and I think rim locks are after that. I'll go ahead and sh quickly show you uh, an example of a classic rim lock, which is this guy right here. Uh, using a bit key, we open it up and we can see uh, one of those reasons why uh, you have to make your own spring bending thing is because there is no standards in antique locks. I often have people say, oh, it's just a regular antique lock. There's no such thing as a standard antique lock and springs like this have to be bent a certain way to work right so of course blacksmiths had to make the jig to be able to make the springs to be able to make the locks which again is very common in the blacksmith world that is just how they do things so excellent excellent new books out on artisanideas.com make sure and use your promo code if you're buying any of these three books if you're interested in locks and antique locks be sure and hit subscribe on the channel because we do do quite a few antique locks. But any of these three books right here, the new Spruce Forge, Locks and Keys Throughout the Ages, and Persian Locks with our promo code. Again, thank you to the owner of the company for allowing our viewers to be able to save a little bit on the books. And we appreciate you sending them to us again for uh, showing y'all. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure and post them in the comments section. I'll be glad to answer you. And uh, yeah, we'll catch y'all next video.